Hi, I'm Harmi Ilunga. I run my own fashion company in Hong Kong where we celebrate every color of every race on and off the car walk. And this is why you should listen to me. How did your journey begin here in Hong Kong? I moved to Hong Kong when I was 12 and a half. So I moved here as uh, an asylum I'm sorry, my dad has been here 18 years right now. So we moved here and that's how I came to Hong Kong. And just a little girl in the new city, I don't know where is this, like, I remember coming here, I'm like, where is this place, you know, not able to speak English, just like coming to a place super new, so that's how I came here. You have your own fashion company, mm -hmm. what is specifically unique about your modeling agency? And I've been modeling for four years now in Hong Kong, so being in the modeling industry, I realize there's a lack of diversity, you know, there's a lack of representation, you know, you look around Asia, not everybody's pale, you know, we have women who are dark skinned like me, you know, we have Southeast Asian. Most of the time I see that there's a lack of diver diversity representation. I just wanted to create something that people that look like me can see that the matter in the society, there's a representation of them. So the uniqueness about Harmony HK is like, it's a place where we celebrate diversity. We care about models. One of the best thing I say that models are not robot, you know, they're human being. So one of the best thing when we have our models, we want to know who are you? What do you care about the world? And I think that's one of the things that stand out that we got a range of diversity, different races, different age, you know, beautiful looks as well, not only outside but in and out, and that's something that I, I think Harmony HQ is really special, you know. Tell me about some of the discrimination that you face that, you know, has affected your approach in mm. how you run your business on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, it's like, first of all, just being as a black woman, you know, uh, the first thing people see me, they see me my color before seeing me or who I am. When I was told that we don't want you, we prefer what models. And I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm creating my own table. I'm done asking for a seat. It was like, all the time, you know, I go to a job. Oh, you know, no, sorry. You know, you're pretty, but, you know, this is not what the society want, you know? Mm. So I was like, I was tired. You go, you've, I was walking in a runway. I, I can hurt somebody saying, I don't want to have dark models on my line. And these are the things that was, you know what? I'm done. Mm. I have to create something that I'm in control and I know I know how I want it to be run and I want to represent no I want to represent everybody you mm. know so those were the moment that I was like I'm walking out I have to do something it's something that has been always in, in my mind like for two years and right. then I was like when do I start and then 2018 was like boom the moment and then I just put it out there when the models come over for the casting I want you to know that I care and I want I, I can hear you and I think that's one of the things that in the model industry you don't get to be here you're only there to represent your beauty face and you go mm -hmm. but that's one of the things that I've learned you know just treating people equally as a leading lady in yeah. your company yeah why is it so critical to bring women of color into top tier management so this is the thing when you see somebody that looks like you, it bring this confidence. It bring this self-esteem. Self I remember I used to lighten my skin because I wanted to look like what the media was representing. But then at this moment, I'm in love with myself that I love my beautiful dark skin and I want other women to be able to see that and tend to love themselves for who they are. You know what I mean? So this is one of the things like I say representation matter because you see somebody that look like you and that just bring you a sense of belonging. I, there's a lot of like Afro kids here in Hong Kong and you know they be like, I don't have anybody that looks like me, you know? I don't know what to do, but I wanted to be that person that at least, you know, you can look up to. So when you tend to see people that looks like you, it just brings a sense of belonging, you know? Because I know I've been brought up here in Hong Kong my whole life, and I know how it feels to not have somebody to look up to, somebody that you can say, oh my God, I look like I, I compare. That's why I think just having these people just brings mm. you a sense of belonging that, Oh, I'm not alone here. There's somebody out there who has been through what I'm going through and I can make it. And only 22 years old, Hamli Olunga, thank you so much for being an example for many young women across the world. Thank, thank you. Thank you.